we did a, a study of the holy roller internally last year, but what's happening is water is getting into the roof, dripping down the floor, it's rusting and corroding. So the hull itself is starting to weaken uh, and, and with rust. So because of this, uh, we, through the study, we estimate there's probably five, maybe 10 years uh, that it'll stand as it is right now. Hello again everyone, it's me Matt. I hope you're having a great day looking after yourself during these really challenging times. Today we are talking about military memorials and one very special, in particular, Canadian military war memorial. Now there are many uh, military vehicles around the world or military pieces of equipment that have been placed and staged in areas where they're to pay respects to those who have served on them or regiments or units that have sacrificed so much to uh, you know, provide freedom to us around the world or whatever conflict they've been involved in. And the vehicle that I want to talk to you about today is actually located in London, Ontario, which is in Canada, where I now live. Uh, and as an armoured enthusiast uh, and, you know, basically almost a fanatic of tanks, I thought it would be really, really important to share this uh, story and this, uh, you know, really important piece of military history with you all, because I know a lot of you uh, do like your World War II history. I know also a lot of you love tanks and military equipment. And also, you, a lot of you are Canadian. Um, and I think it's important for me as a Canadian and as a you know enthusiast of armor to share this with everyone. So today we are talking about the Holy Roller Tank and its fight for its life. Uh, the Holy Roller Tank is a Sherman tank that's located in London, Ontario as a memorial to um, basically the D-Day landing that it landed on uh, to all the way through the war. Um, it's a 33 ton beast. Uh, it's located in Victoria Park and was part of a London regiment uh, known as the 1st Hussars, which is a pretty prominent regiment in its time for Canada, an armoured regiment in Canada at the time that did very, very well throughout its campaign, from uh, Normandy all the way through to, uh, you know, Cain, France, Breda, Zetten, Netherlands, uh, Hochul Forest in Germany. So it did very, very well um, as, a, as a regiment, and they still continued wanting to keep uh, obviously the history of this tank going with the memorial of the Holy Roller, which is the name of this tank. Um, about 350 of the tanks were used in the war by the first Assars, uh, and the Holy Roller is the only survivor of the entire campaign, whether it be vehicles were scrapped or destroyed, whatever it may be. Uh, it's the only one to make it through. Uh, it survived 14 major battles and traveled almost 14 thousand kilometers dodging landmines surviving hits from anti-tank guns etc etc so this is pretty special uh there's not really many vehicles that you could say have survived such an enduring battle uh during world war ii than this vehicle has and that's why i think it's really really important to share this uh, with you today so i'm going to run through a quick video explaining um from an actual canadian armed forces member what is going on with this vehicle and what happened to this vehicle in its history and then i'll talk a little bit more about uh, what we want to discuss today uh, lieutenant colonel alan finney i'm the commanding officer of the first desires here in london we're standing on this nice uh, warm day just uh, beside the holy roller uh, which is a Sherman tank from the 1st Desires uh, Headquarters Squadron that landed on D-Day, uh, 45 minutes behind the main assault wave. Uh, and the Holy Roller uh, fought through the war uh, up until VE Day uh, in May 8, 1945. Uh, it was brought back to Canada in 1946 and presented to the city in 1950 and has been residing in Victoria Park since 1956. It's down to us as a regiment, it's our history, it's part of the city's history because the people that served on this tank are from the City of London and we need to uh, just keep it going, keep that memory alive because if we forget what these guys did, uh, these brave soldiers for our freedoms, we, we're we tend to repeat it. The tank is a symbol of a crew, it's a symbol of a family for these people, so it's, it's their home. They lived, they fought, and they died in these vehicles. The first is ours, uh, three squadrons in the headquarters is roughly 60 tanks. Uh, at the end of the war we had gone through 350 tanks uh, throughout. The Holy Roller is the only one that fought from D-Day up to VE Day and, and has come back. So you get an idea of just how um, 
how dangerous it was to be in this type of tank during the war, the, the amount of casualties that we went through, uh, and to be the only surviving veteran uh, vehicle uh, from the regiment uh, is very important. We did a, a study of the Holy Roller internally last year, but what's happening is water is getting into the roof, dripping down the floor, it's rusting and corroding, so the hull itself is starting to weaken uh, and, and with rust. So because of this, uh, we, through the study, we estimate there's probably five, maybe ten years uh, that will stand as it is right now. Um, so we, we've, we've struck a committee to look at um, fixing the Holy Roller so it remains as a memorial to the soldiers uh, of the Second World War. Uh, and in the very near future we will be uh, hopefully launching the Holy Roller Memorial Project to repair it uh, and, and uh, maintain it for another 50 to 80 years. So there you go guys, um, honestly, knowing that there is the risk of this tank going through so much in its military life to then succumb to the elements and weather is almost heartbreaking. Um, but what actually makes me feel a lot better about this situation is that there are people who are passionate and have the pride and the responsibility of wanting to keep things like this going. Um, a lot of people may look at this as just a tank or just a piece of metal with tracks on it, and clearly it is not. It is a memorial, it is a... Um, sentiment and it is the highest level of respect to uh, an item that is basically given so much to the crews that have sacrificed their lives um, inside of it or with other vehicles that went to that war in World War II. So it does make me very proud to know that there are Canadians and people out there that want to keep this thing going and, and reading through this article has some really interesting points. So let's have a quick read through and of course this is from the London Free Press so you know all copyrights etc with them. Um, Generations of kids have climbed on it and every D-Day anniversary old soldiers shed tears over it. Idle for decades the Holy Roller, arguably London's best known military monument, is in the fight of its life and could fall apart within years if it does not win its next battle. The big Sherman tank that stands guard in Victoria Park is so badly rusted, the London regiment that brought it back from Europe after the Second World War says it needs a $120,000 repair job that will involve dismantling the 33-ton behemoth and rebuilding it from the inside out. And that's a huge fee. You know, tank restoration is not cheap. Uh, these are big pieces of equipment. It takes a lot of logistics and infrastructure and manpower to get these things overhauled. Um, it's not easy. You know, there's not very many businesses out there as tank overhaul companies. Um, it just doesn't quite work like that. You need specialist equipment, specialist training and skills to get these kind of pieces of equipment up and running especially to the high standard that I'm sure they're wanting it to be at to make sure that it is protected from the weather and elements for the future and to you know uh, respect and honor the tank in making sure that it's high quality of restoration in the first place. Longer term the first Assars, the regiment that used the tank uh, to land on D-Day and drive the Germans back to Germany are pondering whether to put an engine in it and get it running again for parades and other special occasions which again is incredible I would love to see this thing driving around can you imagine it sat there for so long and all of a sudden we're able to get this thing rolling again it would just it literally bring a tear to my eye and that's no word of a lie seeing that happen knowing the prestige and the heritage and the history behind this vehicle and seeing it rolling again literally would make me cry. Uh, right now a new engine in the tank is still a pipe dream however because of the $500,000 price tag that would come with it. That's an incredible amount of money but I can see that being the case. Uh, it's baffling to me that it is so high but I can understand as to why because it is a classical vehicle. It's not easy to get parts, it's not easy to get custom fabrication or things like this. Being that I was a tank mechanic in the British Army I know what it's like when it comes to just simple repairs with parts coming straight from the supply chain. I can't imagine what it's like trying to get, you know, an old 1945 tank engine and equipment running smoothly again. It, it would be expensive. But if the Holy Roller is not repaired soon, it will fall apart within 10 years, the first Assars officials say. And that's freaking heartbreaking, folks. And I feel like it's part of our duty, especially if you're an armoured enthusiast, especially as a Canadian armoured enthusiast, it's part of our duty and my duty to try and support this in any way I can. And this video is, I guess, just a little drop in the bucket to try and do that. We were getting to a point where it was going to get too late to save it, said Gary Cambridge, a retired sergeant with the 1st Assars, a reserve regiment based in London and Sarnia. Cambridge is part of a team of volunteers, see volunteers, people who are spending their own time, dedicating their own free time to make this thing come back to life and that's just it's soul food folks i would love to do that if i had a tank i could restore in town right now trust me i'd be all, all over it um 
So they're doing it through the Holy Roller Memorial Project, which will be unveiled in late spring. As of right now, I haven't seen any information on this yet. Maybe it has been released. If you have got any information on it, please put it in the description uh, description box, sorry, in the comment section below. Please share it around. We want to get this, you know, up and rolling as quickly as possible and get involved in this project. Incredibly, the Holy Roller is only uh, one of two Canadian tanks. The second from Sherbrooke, Quebec, uh, is called the Bomb, that rumbled their way across the beaches of Normandy and was still intact at the end of the war nearly a year later. The cheaply produced Sherman tanks, which tended to blow up if struck by enemy fire, were nicknamed Ronson after a cigarette lighter whose slogan was, Lights first time every time. Makes me sad that that was... <laughs> that was a statement. Um, landing on Juno Beach, uh, June 6th, 1944, the tanks carrying members of the first Assars in the first wave to hit French soil were critical in enabling infantry to escape from the deadly beach. The Holy Roller, which rode in on the second wave, survived 14 major battles and travelled 4,000 kilometres, dodging landmines and surviving hits from anti-tank guns and in many battles all over the parts of Europe. Incredible. And just look at that map. You know, for one little Sherman to make it all that way, it's like the little Sherman that could. Uh, just, it's incredible. It really, really is. Incredibly, its turret was destroyed in France and actually replaced with one from a disabled tank. And I'm kind of curious as to whether the turret on the one that's sat in the park right now in London is the same turret. I'm not too sure. Uh, in Appledorn in the Netherlands, the Holy Roller, which was quickly becoming legendary among troops, and no wonder why, uh, blew out its track suspensions and should have been sidelined. But its commander, Colonel Frank White, thought otherwise. What a boss. Six new suspensions, each weighing around 680 kilograms, were laboriously fitted onto the tanks. That is incredible. You, those, those bogeys... Uh, suspension systems on Shermans are not easy to fix so you know clearly there's a lot of pride and passion in this vehicle even when it was serving to say you know what we're not giving up this thing we're going to keep it rolling hence the name Holy Roller uh, quote the Holy Roller is a one in a million as far as we're concerned the pride of the whole regiment that's what White said during a 1945 interview with the London Free Press while still in Germany we'll sure hate to see her say goodbye to her that's <laughs> the pride in a, in a piece of equipment that some people are astonished by. They're like, well, why would you have pride in a tank? Like, it's just a tank. It's not quite like that, though. When you start working armored vehicles and you live in it and you go in environments that are dangerous, you'll understand why it's so important to the troops. No plans were afoot yet to bring her back to London. The Holy Roller was so valued among her regiment that it was repaired before being scheduled to be turned over to a tank collecting point in the Netherlands at the end of the war on May 8th, 1945. So basically, the troops said, if we have to send this thing home or send it back to the scrap or whatever else is going to happen to it, we're going to make it pristine and as good as it could be as if it was going into battle. That, my friends, is true true passion and pride and really again brings a bit of a tear to my eye to say that you know troops know they're going to lose their tank but they're not going to send her looking like a bag of crap they're going to send her back looking pristine and ready to fight another day that's that's incredible and tr really quite it kind of shows the ethos of the armored corps and how much they have respect for their tanks and the same you know applies for us now me as a reservist in the artillery and the canadian Armed forces the same it goes for our guns is that we you know we never abandon them we look after them they're our colors um, the tanks are not the colors of the armored regiment, but the same pride and establishment for them still stands, and that's a testament to that little statement there. That tank is going to the dump in the best shape of any tank in the whole Canadian Army, White said in the 1945 interview. She is our pet, and she's going to leave our hands in the best shape we can put her in, and that's that's just awesome. But after the war ended, each regiment was allowed one war trophy. The first Hussars chose the Holy Roller, whose achievements were against all odds, almost like the Memphis Belle of tanks. One of more than 350 tanks used in the war by the First Assars, Holy Roller was the only survivor. That's an incredible accomplishment out of all the thousands of Canadian tanks commended between D-Day and V-Day. This is one of the this is one that managed to make it all the way through, said First Assar Lieutenant Colonel retired Ian Haley. In 2017, the 78-year-old military landmark was opened up for the first time in six decades for inspection at the request of its owner, the City of London. Extensive debilitating rust was discovered, and here's where we're starting to hit the problems here, folks. Okay. This is what kills plinths and war memorials is that they just, you know, the weathering and the elements take take a hold. And unfortunately, if these things aren't protected, time will always take over. Time and elements will always take over no matter how well you try and protect it. The first SARS rallied and a rescue plan was cobbled together. We can't keep our human veterans alive, but we can do something to keep this vehicle, said Colonel Alan Finney, commander of the first SARS. Our veterans are not getting any younger. In the near future, from the first Assars perspective, the Holy Roller will be the only veteran of the regiment that landed on D-Day and fought throughout the war. That's incredible, right? A testament again to those who served on the vehicle. 
Uh, so what's the battle plan then? Due to be unveiled this spring near the anniversary of D-Day, the Holy Roller Memorial Project will have a goal of raising $120,000 through a number of avenues. The Memorial Project is designed to keep alive the memory of what London soldiers did in the Second World War, said Colonel Alan Finley, a commander of the First Assars. We're trying, what we're trying not to do is come across as a glorification of war. Those who have served in war know there is no glory in war. Indeed, a very wise and applicable statement. You know, these war memorials and these, you know, kind of military vehicles not there to stick it to you and say, yeah, we're badass, we're here to fight wars. It's there to, you know, uh, respect and honor those who have served in the war and to remind us that we don't want to go to war again. It's the key thing that we don't want to do. It's a stark realization of saying this piece of equipment was in a war and it's a reminder to us all that we do not want to have to go back to times of that. The group would also like to construct a memorial honoring the Holy Rollers crew to accompany the tank when it's re-enlisted in Victoria Park. Um, so how are they going to fix it? A crane would be used to hoist the Holy Roller onto a flatbed. Uh, using its tracks to transport it would be obviously unwise, said Perry Kitson, the technical expert on the project. The problem is it's sat for too long. We don't know if anything will turn out without serious damage to it. Safe option is to lift it up and crane swing it over. That makes complete sense. Uh, you obviously can't move it on tracks like now, especially with heavy rust in the chassis. From there, it will be transported to either Wolseley Barracks or another suitable location where it will be meticulously taken apart by an army of volunteers. Most of us are looking at this machine as an artifact. Too right, it's an artifact. Uh, so it has to be properly dis disassembled, everything catalogued and photographed and properly restored. So they're doing it the right way. They're doing it properly. They're going to be meticulous. And that, again, just reinforces how much pride I have in these people and how, how much respect I have for these people volunteering to take every ounce of meticulous detail to make sure that this thing is done properly in the right way, not just rushed to make sure that it's safe again for another 20 years. They're doing it properly. The tank would be completely stripped, sandblasted, preserved, and repainted over a period of six months to one year. So this takes a long time, folks, and hence the cost of doing that kind of process. It's not easy. Kitson, a former Army Reserve, has said he has a passion for rehabilitating armoured vehicles. He has restored three armoured tracked vehicles and has volunteered his time at several tank museums. What a boss. What an absolute legend for him to do that. Um, I wish I had that job. I wish I had the money and the time and, and the resources and the life that I could do that. It would be a dream of mine. Um, but, you know, I just have to sit here and read in awe of these people and how much respect I have for them. He said, I really enjoy this type of work and any place that needs an extra set of hands, I jump in with a full set of wrenches. I'm not too sure if he was Remy, um, but he sounds like a Remy soldier. If he's not, then still hats off to you. Um, why should Londoners care? Uh, the Holy Roller and other Canadian military monuments are intended to act as a memory aid so people don't forget, said military historian and Western University history, history professor Jonathan Vance. It's a hugely important symbol, he said. Everybody knows it, whether they have been to an event or even played on it as kids. But Vance points out as an expensive refurbishment won't mean the tank will be able to withstand the elements forever. A few years down the road, you'll be doing the same position again, he said. The pragmatic thing to do is to move it indoors somewhere, but as soon as you put it indoors, it will be less visible. Uh, so yeah, um, I'll leave this in the background so you can read it as I'm kind of chatting some points about the Holy Roller. But yes, that's a, a wise point, right? So if this thing does get put into a museum, it will be protected. But I think it negates the, the value and the purpose of it being in a park like that, that it's constantly there to the public. You know, a lot of people don't visit the museum because they have no interest. But with something that's prominently sat in a park like that, it kind of says, you know what? Like, look at me. Remind yourself as to what has happened in the past remind yourself that this is not where we want to go again honor those who have been you know sacrificed so much inside of them it's kind of a keep it in a place where it should be seen by the public and i'm not saying it wouldn't be seen as much in the museum but let's be honest here people go to a park a lot more than they would do museums you normally go to a museum what once in a year maybe once in your lifetime some people um but for me as long as it's getting restored and put back to its original, you know, safe condition, that's just soul food for me. It's incredible. I'm so proud to know that these people are doing this. In terms of the fund itself, um, I'm not sure how they're going to deal with this or how the fund's going to start. Um, trust me when I say this, I will be doing um, a specific, some kind of specific fundraising event for this tank, whether it be a live stream. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I've got to figure something out because this is incredibly important i know i said i'm going to do a charity event also for help for heroes doing the uh you know 12 hours live stream of doing rifle drill that's still in the works it's very difficult for me to find the right time or the right i guess infrastructure of me in my life to do that 
kind of live stream, but I do really want to start something for this specifically because, you know, I talk about tanks and armored fighting vehicles on my channel all the time. And as I said, as a Canadian, as an enthusiast of armor, I really do feel I need to get involved in this. And I hope you all that are watching this can also encourage others or yourself to get into this kind of event uh, or this kind of fundraising for this vehicle too in your own specific way, whether it be actually just going straight to the fund or providing your own kind of, you know, charity for this. Um, I know a lot of people think, Matt, it's just a tank, you know, why don't you raise money for other more important things? To me, this is important. Um, it's not just about the tank, it's about the veterans who served on it, it's about the veterans who have served on other tanks in the Canadian Armed Forces or any armed forces. Uh, it's important, and I know it's, it's, a, it's a symbol, it's not something that's actually going to you know, actively help people. But to me, it's helping this, the memory of people, and to me, that's just a personal standby that I'm there to honor those who have sacrificed so much. And if it's the smallest thing that I can do to do a couple of things on this YouTube channel to promote and make sure this event and this, sorry, this uh, fundraiser goes well, I mean, $120,000, clearly I'm not going to be able to raise $120,000, but if I can raise one dollar that's at least something uh, i will be donating myself just from my own monetary value as well to this fund for sure and i'll be making a video on that when they do announce more details again i couldn't find any details on it right now i'm sure they'll announce soon but we'll we'll see as it comes and um, folks i would really appreciate if you could share this video around to those of you who you know would be interested in this kind of thing um, let's hope that the Holy Roller does continue to roll on for the rest of time. I'm sure it will. You know, there's a lot of people out there that have the same views and values that I do that will want to keep this thing going. I appreciate you stopping by. If you did enjoy the video, as I said, please share, but also leave a like and a comment. I'd love to hear what you think about this vehicle and this particular project. If you want to be notified of any upcoming videos in the future, please click um, the little bell button by the subscribe button so you can be notified next time. Okay, folks, have a wonderful day. Stay safe. All the best. Bye-bye.